Since is better than Caron. No, Caron's better. He's a converter. What if you just like, I don't know, use both? Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today we are going to be talking about Sensa, Eve and Dawn. Funnily enough, this is the third time I'm making this video. So I have like two other videos that I just never published. And I'm not sure why, but I just wasn't that happy with them. But at this point, everyone's had an opportunity to play with all three characters, especially because like we get to use them in the event. And so hopefully this will try to like help you decide whether you want to roll or not. Let me start with the TLDR. If you're going to roll, roll for Sensa and don't go in looking for Eve. And so with that being said, let's jump into the video and talk about how I came to this kind of conclusion. Let's begin with looking at Sensa's skills. And like I said, everyone should be quite familiar with them right now. The skill itself is to essentially like you get to select one of the tiles. So let me just bring up the game here. And so you can see I've got the active up if I initiate it. And then so you can actually go in a cross shape, depending on which square you click, it like puts out a massive fan like that. So the AOE on this is actually incredibly massive. But on top of that, it has a little mini teleporter. It is admittedly only for one tile, but that one tile actually changes a lot. And the reason that it changes a lot is because of this image over here. Old Mate Yang has gotten us some info from NGA, I think. And so it's saying essentially the closest row, so this guy over here, this row will take 1 plus 1.5 times damage, which equals 2.5 times damage. And so Yang goes on to say that the row behind it, the second row actually does 1 plus 0.75 times damage. So you're going from 2.5 times damage to 1.75 times damage, and then one times damage for the rest of the rows. Just by doing this little leap, you're actually missing out on 0.75 times multiplier and that is honestly quite significant and the reason is because like well let's compare it against Caron. So over here again old mate Yang has done a couple more calculations and essentially he's done it against like multi-tile bosses and so you can kind of read it yourself but like the TLDR is that since the BT6 like breakthrough 6 does like a lot of damage. Obviously that's not realistic for everybody so let's like I would say compare to the base and so you would see that they are pretty evenly matched in like all of them. However the good thing about since is, is that his reach is so incredible. He actually does like so much damage. So outside of like boss killing utility, he actually has so much range. On top of that, he can actually point it into like any direction. So that's really freaking good. However, what Karan does have is he does have like the extra utility where he gets like the knockback as well as the tile reset. Some people do like overestimate his tile reset. They're like, oh man, it makes him like a converter, everything in one. Honestly, I like disagree with that because Karan, you can see over here, it actually just resets any non-red tiles. And so so what I would call Karon is actually more of a resetter rather than a converter. Uriel is a converter because she has a small chance to generate red tiles. When the only thing you have is to just reset all non-red tiles, it's kind of just like a resetter. There is no waiting towards red tiles and so like you may or may not come out ahead. With Uriel or like AC or like some of the other converters, like you know you'll come out ahead. And so whilst that could be good, it could be like not that great either. I personally like this effect, but I just think it's a little bit like overrated. People are like, oh man, it just makes him like the best character in the freaking game. All right, and so with that being said, I think we're pretty good with like the active skill comparisons. I'm comparing Sinsa to Karan, not because like everyone's like, oh, Sinsa versus Karan, but because they are both of the same class, which is detonators. And so with that being said, I think we can conclude that they are both like really freaking good. It just depends on what you like. I would say Karan is more on like the control side and Sinsa is just like big damage, like Ungo Bongo big damage. Honestly, they are both really freaking good, especially at a skill CD of three. Okay, let's move back to Sinsa and let's talk about his equipment because his equipment, I think is the first of its kind and I think it's probably like the best part of his kit. So essentially he gets diagonal attack so this is like very similar to Karon. However the difference between Karon and Sinsa is that they are kind of like a selfish offense and versus a supportive offense. What I mean by that is that Karon essentially just does more damage but he helps himself do more damage. His equipment really boosts his own personal DPS however Sinsa is able to actually bring the team DPS up. If you guys did come from pre-con like this is going to be music to your ears because this is defense down and I think Sinsa might be one of the first characters to have like a stackable auto defense down, which is freaking lit, especially with how defense works in this game, like where it's actually like a flat value. I think defense down and especially in any game is probably one of like the best damage dealing assets that you could have. On top of that, the incredible thing about the defense down is that it is based on Sinsa's basic defense. And if you actually manage to get a couple of copies of Sinsa, you see this guy over here, the breakthrough five gives him extra defense in which he is actually able to then like stack it over here. So technically his breakthrough five has like a dual purpose where he actually gets tankier as well as does more defense down. This is probably going to hold true for like other defense down characters like when they come along. But yeah, defense down, I think it's really freaking awesome. However, what this effect or this equipment actually does is kind of it locks Sinsa into like the leader position because he needs to be the leader to apply the defense down first and then the other characters can come along and whack him. But that's kind of just like for your optimal DPS. All in all, I really rate this out of eight. Like this is a really freaking good equipment. No matter the character, I would take this effect. Like it is completely useful. All right, 
right, moving on, we've got the chain combo, and I actually don't really like this chain combo because it does the radial shape stuff, and the radial shape is pretty much like in your cardinal directions, and I'm just not really a big fan of it. I'm a massive fan of clusters. With that being said, though, radial shape kind of gives you like some room to do some big brain plays, but clusters are just like a lot more solid and a lot more reliable in terms of the hitbox. And so it's for that reason that I would actually prefer Karons because he has like this guy over here. And moving through to his breakthrough, just don't get debated by this one. That's probably my only tip. His skill damage does not increase by 200%. It actually increases to 200%. And so what I'm saying is that this guy, this 180% turns into 200%. And if you want me to prove it to you, I'm just going to go into here, click on Sinsa, and I'm going to go into breakthrough. And so you can see this guy over here is at 180%. And so if I go up to breakthrough, whatever, six, it's going to be 200%. And so this is actually reflected in the game as well. So don't get debated by that. It sounds really freaking good because that would triple his damage, but it's not really like that. Okay. And to summarize in conclusion, I say that if you don't have Charon, I would roll for Sinsa. Sinsa, to be honest, like compared especially to a lot of the other six stars, he is a really, really solid detonator. However, with that being said, he is mainly oriented to DPS. And whilst he does have like an offensive support skill in the defense down, I would say that like DPS is generally a still more prone to be like power crept. On the other hand, you've got Charon with his train that like knocks people left and right. I think that's going to be a little bit harder to power creep. On top of that, he does have the reset, but like I said, I think the reset is a little bit overrated. More often than not, it doesn't really do much for me. Like I completely get that the reset, like you will typically come out ahead because your red tiles are not going to be changed. And so hopefully you will gain some red tiles, but again, it's not weighted. So it's not like incredible. It's good. I agree, but it's not incredible. So yeah, I think that's enough about Sinsa versus Charon. Yeah, I would go for him. Honestly, it's way too early in the game to start talking about power creep. And as for me, let me just show you guys. I essentially dumped all of my freaking gemmies into it because I kind of, I was just like, I really want to freaking roll. As you guys can see, I only have one single roll on me and all I got from these banners was a dupe Midgard. Yeah, I'm a little bit upset, but that's how it is with these games, right? Anyway, moving on, let's start talking about Eve. So Eve is an interesting one because as you could tell from the very start of the video, I'm not overly impressed with her. It says that she's a detonator, but the only thing that screams detonator to me is like her chain combo. Her skill is like a vice 2.0. It's like so reminiscent of a sniper. And then her equipment also, it's kind of like a random whack to like a targeted enemy, which is also kind of like a sniper. For me, typically how I see snipers versus detonators, it's that detonators do like a lot of AOE damage and snipers do like a lot of targeted damage. Snipers typically have the ability to do like kind of guaranteed damage within a certain radius, whereas detonators are kind of like, well, I hope I hit you with the AOE. So like I was just saying, Eve feels a lot more like a sniper than she does a detonator. All right, so let's talk about the skill. The skill is 50% damage 20 times to the nearest enemy within three surrounding clusters. I would say that this is kind of an upgrade from Vice's skill. And the reason is because Vice's skill is unpredictable as opposed to Eve's. So what I really mean is that for Eve's skill, you can actually reposition for it. You can do some level of planning, whereas Vice is like, oh man, I really hope it finishes off that like one thing in the corner. The other thing about Eve is that she actually stuns the last target attacked. And it's funny because like I literally just went on about like how I think utility can't be power crept. However, I think stun is probably one of the worst utilities right now because like bosses are immune to it. And then in the context of like smaller or larger monsters, like non-boss monsters, then it doesn't really like do much for you. Stunning a unit is kind of like stalling it out. It might get you a little bit of extra survivability, but if you stun units, they also are not walking towards you. And so if they're not walking towards you, it's going to be a little bit harder to kill them usually. At this point in time, I'm just not a massive fan of stun. I just think that there are better utilities out there. That's kind of it. On top of that, I think the worst part about her entire kit actually is that her skill CD is four turns. To be honest, this isn't like a really impressive attack. It's like 50% damage 20 times. That's what, like maybe 1k damage plus an increase in damage. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I mean, like I suppose this would be really, really good against like the single cell bosses. But again, the fact that it's on a four turn skill CD, like it just feels a bit too long to be really impactful. And that's kind of how I felt in her trial. All right, as for her equipment, so when normal attacks, chain combos and active skills inflict damage, every eighth instance of damage also inflicts 100 damage once to the nearest enemy to Eve. This is pretty cool because it reminds me of like a skill in Maple Story, final attack. But essentially it's kind of like, well, I'm going to hit this guy like a whole bunch of times and then every eight times I'm going to do like an extra little bit of damage. So it's kind of like the Orbeez in Secret Territory 
territory, except they only help you like once in a while. I think it's okay, especially for like a damage dealer. However, again, it's straight up damage and I think it's still prone to like power creep in the future. And again, with that being said, don't worry about power creep too early. It's cool. It's not like exceptionally impressive, but like it's, it's cool. All right. And last we've got her chain combo in which she goes up from a cross to a radial shape. Again, not really a big fan of the radials just for the same reasons that I said for Sinsa. All in all, Eve is in a really odd place. I feel like she is a little bit underpowered. I think her skill CD needs a little bit of a buff up to three turns and then perhaps maybe something a little bit better for like the equipment. Feels a little bit weak when I used it in her trial, maybe like every seventh or sixth attack. But on top of that, it's just not really interesting at all. But I guess you could argue Chiron's isn't really interesting either. Aside from that, I think she's fine. She's just a little bit undertuned. And so when I actually played her, like I was a little bit disappointed in how she performed. So yeah, I would say if you're going for Eve, go for her because she's cute. Because she is cute. Look at her. She's so cute. Otherwise, I would say that if you don't get her, you're not missing out considering they are being added to the mainstay anyway. All right, let's move on to Dawn. Dawn is actually kind of cool. I don't know like what's her deal, but like she's actually kind of grown on me, like especially when I found her horrifying at first. Okay, you know what? When I see that, she is still kind of really horrifying. Okay, so Dawn is one that actually impressed me quite a fair bit in the trial. And the cool thing about Dawn is that we can actually compare her against her full breakthrough. And the reason for that is because we actually get all of her soul ambers from the event. And so instead of having these stats, what she really has is these stats over here. And so if I compare her to another forest sniper, so we've got uh, Cuscutta up here, you can see that her stats that we get her at is actually going to be higher than Cuscutta's. Obviously, if you get like Cuscutta's breakthroughs, she's going to be better than Dawn's. But at this state of the game, I think it's actually really good. But especially for a welfare unit, I think Dawn is actually quite good. So with that being said, let's start going through her skills. And so her first one is dealing 200% damage to all enemies. And if the number of enemies hit is two or less, can cast one more time this turn. So this is quite nice. It's not really like a detonator level skill where you do like cell by cell damage. However, it is map wide. And the fact that there is this cool condition that allows you to potentially cast twice, like that's a pretty sneaky mechanic. It doesn't look like it does a whole lot of damage, but honestly, I think we take this one. On top of that, she's got a skill CD of three turns and I think that's like pretty standard. I think my gut feeling for all of these skill CDs and stuff like generally speaking for all of your attackers, so like I'm talking your snipers and your detonators, if it's a pretty average skill, you really want a pretty average skill CD. So I'm talking three turns. Going back to Eve, I thought that skill was pretty average. And so I thought it deserved three turns. I didn't think it was anything spectacular. Like for example, if Charon or Sensor's skills were actually like it did a little bit more damage, they could buff it up to four turns or something, something like that, right? But generally speaking, I think three turns is a really, really fair skill CD. All right, so moving on, she's got a pretty cool equipment. Essentially using active skills marks targets. And then when you attack them, the mark is actually consumed and then restores HP equal to 10% of the damage dealt. On top of that, if we are at full HP already, we get an extra final damage attack boost. Honestly, like all of the conditionals on this, like I really, really like it. In the scenario that you're already doing well, this makes you win even harder. On top of that, Dawn's chain combos are all about like clusters and you guys already know how I feel about clusters. However, what is really cool about this one is that when we get her to break through six, we actually get it into three surrounding clusters. And so this kind of like expands her AOE, which is really, really nice. However, this is kind of like a different cluster to detonators where detonators hit every single cell. This is more like a, we're gonna like look at this range and hit everyone once. So whilst it's not detonator crazy, it's still like really, really nice. And so somebody left a comment on one of my other videos and I thought this was really, really relatable. And so I wanna share it. And so what he said is that he found that two surrounding clusters is actually really, really short range. However, three surrounding clusters feels like a massive range. And from experience, I completely agree with that. Two feels like it's barely enough and three feels like you've got the entire world. And so again, at max breakthrough, we get three and we get all of these nice stats and like, this is just awesome. I think for a welfare unit, Dawn is very, very competitive, especially when compared to a lot of the other characters, especially when she has like these different conditionals and like the ability to handle different scenarios. I think generally speaking with like all of this kit in mind, she is really, really solid. Leveling her up in my opinion is not a mistake. However, with that being said, if you have already leveled up a five star or a six star green sniper, I would say hold off on Dawn. So if you have Cascada, for example, or if you even have like, what's her name, Mika, I would say that largely they play like the same role. And so in that kind of case, you wouldn't build Dawn. Otherwise, yeah, I think she is a really solid choice. All right, so at that, I think we're kind of done with the video. So let's start wrapping things up. I've got a secret question for you guys. And I really want to know, did you guys roll for Sinsa or Eve? I freaking went all in and all I got was a Midgard dupe. And I'm still really, really upset about that. But that's okay because this question is not about me. It's about you guys. So you guys let me know if you went in on the Sinsa or Eve banner or if you plan to. And if you did get either, who did you get and how many pulls did it take? Drop that in the comments below.
below and I would really appreciate it because it means that you've actually watched all the way to the end of the video. And for that, I am very, very grateful. So thank you very much. Otherwise, if this video has kind of helped you or you found it mildly entertaining, then please consider a like, a sub, a comment, a follow. You already know what it is. Share it with your friends. And if you're feeling a little bit lonely, come join the Discord. If you would like to support the channel, there are some affiliate links down in the description below. Otherwise, we also have a membership thing in which you get a cool little badge as well as some emojis. As always, completely optional. But otherwise, as my couch once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.